Hi, welcome to today's video. Different background, ignore it. Let's get into what new launches there are. I'm in my comfy clothes. I have trembled up on my iPad. Let's see what's new. I don't know why that was so aggressive. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna put the photos up next to me. And yeah, I just fancy being in my comfy clothes, hair up, you know, I normally have like a full face of glam on my channel, but here I am today, just my concealer and my gloss. Um, Holy Grails, first of all, the uh, Dior Forever Concealer, fantastic. And the Kylie lip glosses, the sparkly ones. I don't know what she put in them lip glosses, she put crack in those lip glosses because boy, they are great. Let's get into the first one, we are looking at Winnie the Pooh. First of all, I think this is a very unique launch, just because I haven't seen anybody do a Disney Winnie the Pooh collab. I just think this is a really, really cute launch. Do I need any of it? No, unfortunately. However, I may need those um, makeup sponges because whoever's idea it was to put the little makeup sponges in the same shape as Piglet's ears, they deserve a raise. They deserve, I don't know, a massage with a happy ending. They deserve the world. Seriously. I've just had a look and the sponges are only £10 for the set. I'm so tempted. I'm seriously so, and they're pink. Yeah, they're good. They're, I love that idea. The rest is very cute, very, very on theme. One thing about Spectrum is they are always on theme. Whatever collab it is, whatever you know, theme that they pick, I always think, you know, the outcome is always great, to be fair. I have a couple Spectrum brushes and I do really like them. My thing is, with a brush set like this, where it's £45 for a brush set of eight, I don't necessarily need all of these brushes, you know? But definitely props for them for uniqueness. They get that. Moving on to Colourpop. This is... <laughs> This is a strange launch from Colourpop. I know, you know, they're the brand that never sleeps. <laughs> Maybe you should. Um, <laughs> this is the new pop art collection. Um, let me just say the blushes are nice. The blushes are cute. Um, I just don't feel like this is on theme for them. This is not Colourpop's vibe. These lippy duos... They look cheap. They, your Colourpop is cheap, but these look cheap. One of the things that makes everyone love Colourpop is that they have products that don't look or feel cheap for prices that most people can afford, which is, you know, why they've been so popular. But this? I don't know. This is what they get for launching a new item every four days because they're running out of ideas and they're coming out like that. That was a bit mean. Oh my goodness. Sorry, maybe I need to eat or something. Um, but yeah, they're they're not great. The lippy duos are at least cohesive. And I think there's three quite cute sets, kind of a pinky one, a ready one, and a nudie one. I think those you know, I'm trying to be you know, I'm trying to be polite here. Those are okay. They still look cheap, but they're okay. I will give them that the outside packaging is very on theme for you know pop art and the outside packaging for the carton is cute i will give them that but moving on to the second thing from colourpop this this is the normal colourpop quality that people expect and i think this looks really cute and so cohesive this what's it called new additions to the nba x colourpop collection so it's the new york knicks and the brooklyn nets these I think these are so on theme. You know, whether you like basketball or not, you could still pick it up. These are very cute. I've got no complaints here. I also think it's very cute that they did the little um, imprint of the basketball on the bottom right um, eyeshadow. Th this is the kind of thing you expect from Colourpop, not the pop art thing. I don't know where that was. Don't know where they were going with that. But just back to the pop art, the um, cream gel liners and the colour sticks duos those are trash <laughs> i'm so sorry but what was going on girl be specific be specific next up is something so beautiful i'm gonna spend my money on this i don't even know how much it is yet and i don't care how much it is i am buying it it's going straight in my cart asa double p 
ASAP No Rocky. This is the Hindash Monochromance Palette. This is so stunning. I bought the original um, palette from Hindash. Was it the Beautopsy? Was that what it was called? I'll put the photo, but this formula, stunning. I've only actually managed to use it once so far. Let me tell you, I felt so beautiful. I felt that everything just worked so cohesively because I had used it as bronzer, blusher and eyeshadow. Seriously, I felt stunning. Like, I'm not kidding. Everything just looked so smooth. I was seriously impressed with the formula. So when this comes out, straight in my bag. He has teased on his Instagram that there's a few other things coming. So the only product he's actually shown is the um, Monochromance palette. But I'm just on his Instagram having a little stalk and it says Lonely Hearts Club, a sneak peek of what's coming for the lips. The colour of my dreams. So I don't know if there's only one colour. And then when you scroll up a little bit more, it then says Crave, Shim <coughs> Crave Shimmer. I got you. But first, let's get into the Monochromance. Next is from a brand I haven't tried before, but it's a brand I want to try at some point. Just haven't um, seen anything that's like, yeah, that's where I want to start, you know? This is from Nabla Cosmetics. I think this is stunning. This is the Read My Mind palette. It says, featuring 16 innovative shades laid out to be read in multiple ways. By lines, by quads, or by mixing and matching the shades as you feel it. That's cute. This is coming out February 23rd on their website. doesn't have a price. Um... Like I said, I haven't tried Nabla, so I'm not really like familiar with what their kind of prices are to guess what it might be. Uh, but this is very, very cute. This is so cute. This reminds me, and hear me out before you disagree. This reminds me of the Zendo Natasha Nona palette, the midi one. Just wait, I'm getting there. Just in the sense that it's got two very distinct colour stories in one palette. So the Zendo's kind of got these pinky orange and then it's got the kind of um, bluey greens. And then the same, this has kind of the pinky cranberries. And then it's got this kind of like bluey grey. And then it's got a couple um, neutrally ones as well. But it's just, okay, whatever. Whatever. Allow it then. Moving on to Julia's Place. They're coming out with a new eyeshadow palette. And four liquid duochrome shadows. Eyeshadow palette is cute. And the outside packaging is quite cute, especially for the palette. It's got a really big um, head on the front. And most of their products do. Um, but they're normally like sideways. Um, and they look kind of like people, if that makes sense. Whereas this almost looks like a mask. I don't know. It's very cool. And it's kind of got this, uh, you'll obviously see the photo. It's got this like pattern over it. And the eyes are blacked out. That's just very unique, very cool, and different from their normal, you know, their other, like, more core products. So this is very cool to me. I do have one, like, pet peeve, and this isn't specific to Julia's Place. When brands have, like, patterns or, like, images on the back of the palette, like, where the actual pans are, where it's got these two, like, um, slanted triangles... I just feel like they're there for no reason. Just remove it and then I can see all the colours just as a colour story. But I feel like having the um, colours on the like back packaging where the shadows are sitting, it just makes it confusing as to what the colour story is. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being fussy. Maybe I am. But that's one small pet peeve. But the palette's going to be 36 and the liquid um, duochrome eyeshadows are going to be 15 each. It says you can get them for a bundle for 96 but that's the same price as buying them separately. So what's the point in getting the bundle? Like, I swear bundles are normally supposed to be a little bit discounted to like entice you to spend more money. But anyway, that's just me. But the duochrome shadows, these are looking, they're looking good. There are four shades. Three of them look very, very cool. I probably won't pick one up, but one of them, the Fula shade, which is the kind of bluey, lilac-y, silvery, it's obvious which one it is, because there's a, a red, gold, this bluey one, and a pink. So is that blue one? She's talking to me, and she's she's saying some filthy things to me, and ma'am, I have a boyfriend. Stay respectful. I may pick her up, though. Makeup by Mario, Ultra Suede, Cozy Lip Cream. Three shades, 
these are full coverage long wearing cozy satin matte color whipped mousse texture <laughs> don't know why i'm saying it like that comfortably cushioned lips passion fruit seed oil nourish it nourishes nourishes and softens lips it is 24 dollars this has just launched on their site and it's very cute i like how there's kind of three shades kind of and it looks to be that they're kind of supposed to be complementary on you know different skin tones so that's very cute i think this is supposed to be quite natural these look very nice i'm so tempted to pick these up but i also think i might just wait until the what did they call it it was that lip thing that they launched and it sold out so fast and you know what it reminded me because the name was similar as well it reminded me of the moisture surge from uh, clinique here it is i don't know why it just did remind me of the clinique one this is the moisture glow plumping lip serum and it just kind of looks like a lip balm but there's a whole bunch of shades and this sold out so quickly how much is this this is 22 dollars in seven inclusive shades uh, innovative serum texture instantly melts onto lips a conditioning blend of vegan oils plump nourish and hydrates yeah these are adorable if they come back in stock or when they come back in stock um i don't want to have to pay shipping unless i make like a big order then i hate paying uh, like shipping customs to the uk i'd rather just wait till it's on a uk website just because it can make it so much more it's normally like 20 dollars, which is like i don't know about like 16 17 pounds so you're paying like the price for like a whole product just to have it shipped whereas if i just wait i can get it for like two pounds in the uk but either way if they come back into stock i think i might get one of both um one of the what's it called again ultra suede cozy lip cream and one of the moisture whatever it was called because they've had great reviews and they sold out so kind of want it next we have launched that i think is very clever from a business perspective i think whenever you can see that a business has looked at what's trending how consumer trends are changing and you know buying habits and things like that and they start to implement those things I always am just like, I see, I see. So I think, let me actually show you what this product is. These are the new Petites Mats collection from Vizier. So they had the big versions and now they're selling the small versions so that you can get them for slightly cheaper. These are gonna be $40. I think the big ones are, actually I don't even wanna say up because I am just talking out my bum right now. But I think it's such a good idea. And you know why? I think that they have seen Natasha Nona, when she comes out with her big palettes, the um, $129, which is £111, when she comes out with those, even when they're beautiful, not so many people buy them. So Natasha Nona has started to do a lot more midi palettes. We've now got the Sunset, the Sunrise, the Love, the Glam, the Retro, the Bronze. We have, she's coming out, it got leaked, I think the pastel one. That one, <laughs> I'm going to pick that up when it comes, let me tell you. I'm not putting up a photo because I'm not trying to get in trouble. Um, but she's coming out with all these smaller palettes and they are selling like hotcakes. So I think that Viseart have seen, actually, if we do slightly smaller palettes, because who's going to pan an eyeshadow? Unless you actively say, I'm going to pan this shadow and I'm going to make it my mission for the next four and a half months to pan this one eyeshadow pan, you're never going to pan them. So having these huge, huge palettes um and these massive palettes from natasha and from Viseart, where they're expensive as well and then people are like oh but you get really big pans so it's worth the money and it's like but i'm never gonna finish those pans so i think this is so so clever and Viseart almost have me tempted because there's the neutrals and the cool toned one and they're talking to me i think these are very cute all of them are stunning and i think it was a fantastic business idea from Viseart. and 40 dollars $40 is a good price. $40 is cheaper than the Natasha Nona mini palettes because the Natasha Nona mini palettes are 65 and these are 40 Not like comparing the brands, it's just that they've done a similar a similar thing. Next we have something that I bought. These only just launched a couple of days ago. This is the new Natasha Nona I Need a Rose Lip Collection. So she came out with three lipsticks, three lip liners and three lip glosses. That all like matched each other. There was Peony, Daphne, and Kala. 
and I bought all three lipsticks and the colour lip liner. I did pick up a lip gloss because I have so many lip glosses right now. And I was trying to make good money decisions. Did I need all three plus a lip liner? No. So was it a good money decision? Or mind your business. But these are stunning. I did a whole separate video um, and it's posted already. So I'll link that down below if you want to see my like more in-depth thoughts. But basically, the lip liners from Natasha's No Nails are a ride or die for me. They are stunning. Stunning. I would highly recommend the lip liners. So if you see a colour in the nude collection you like, get it. Or, you know, the normal I need a nude liners that she already has. Stunning. If you like MAC Well, you will like the I Need a Nude NP Natasha. Um, they're very similar and the Natasha lip liner is probably my most used lip liner right now. Stunning. I kind of only pick the brands that I want to talk about. So for example, I've missed the Revolution. Um, there's one about the Lion King. I'll just mention it while I'm talking about it now. Um, I just don't, I'm not that bothered about Revolution as a brand. I don't find them very interesting or very unique. Um, and they seem to just pump out loads of stuff that just doesn't seem to have that much thought put through it. So this is a Lion King collection and it's cheetah print. That's none of my business. Ofra Cosmetics, I'm kind of on a break from Ofra Cosmetics right now. Um, just last year when it came out about the owner's views um you know i think it's really important to only support brands that you feel that you align with ethically because to me personally like it's not just makeup it's that's my personal opinion and if it's just makeup to you and that's how deep it is to you that's completely fine you can support whoever you want but i work hard as many of us do to make my money so i want it to go to a brand that i support do you know what i mean so anyway in fairness i do think this lotus collection looks cute will i be picking it up no like i said i'm on kind of like a break from supporting them right now i just kind of want to see where they go i kind of have my three pots of this is makeup brands i love and support take all my money kim dash natasha's nona who else nars and so many more then we have brands that i'm not sure how i feel about now i'm taking a bit of a break so one of them is Oprah cosmetics there's a couple more in there but i won't get into that right now and then there's the section of you are never going to see a single penny from me ever again or ever some of them i've never supported some of them i used to support and now decided actually i don't want to like i said they're kind of in the middle for me they're going to probably stay there for a while until I feel comfortable again. Um, but I do think that this collection actually looks cute. And it looks like they've stepped out of their comfort zone a little bit by changing up the kind of packaging and design that they normally have for the highlighters. Um, but will I be buying it? Absolutely not. But moving on, we have something new from Too Faced. Now, this is their summer collection. Babe, it's February. Let's relax. What, what, what rush are we in? Uh, they're launching new lip injections. Surprise, surprise. Their lip injections are very popular, of course they're going to put new colours in them. They're also launching their milk chocolate bronzers, or their chocolate bronzers. They've already launched these, are these just new packaging? I don't know. I don't know why they're being relaunched, that's nothing new. And then there's the Sunset Stripped, sorry, Born This Way Sunset Stripped eyeshadow palette. My issue with Too Faced launches is that they could be so great and so exciting if there were just a few things changed. For example, if you're only relaunching the new bronzers again make the packaging nice at least and not keep it the same packaging and with this eyeshadow palette where they've done a very i'll put a photo up where they've done a very similar lay they've done the exact same layout with very similar color story before throw some colors in there there are a lot of neutrals in here there's a couple shades that look really similar just in those long panels there's like three that all just look like vanilla colors basically or like vanilla cream or whatever they you know they always get called vanilla don't they <laughs> all of the shit just like if you get a tan shade it's always called sand or caramel and these colors are always called vanilla or cream so there's three of them you could have had a gorgeous like pastel yellow with that peachy shade that could have been more of a pink shade to match the writing i just feel like with a couple changes this palette could have been way more exciting 
to more people rather than just another neutral palette. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely a market for this palette. It's people who like neutrals, people who like Too Faced, so Too Faced stands. However, with just a couple changes, so the palette wouldn't even look that different and you could still attract, you know, the normal Too Faced stand, neutral stand market and customers, but you could attract other people as well because there's a couple of pots of colours, it's a little bit different from launching the same thing all the time. Pat McGrath, it looks like there's going to be a Bridgerton 2 collection, which is very cool. The Bridgerton 1 collection looks stunning. I really tried to get my hands on that uh, pale highlighter and I couldn't. Um, when I say couldn't, I mean, I'm going to be so real. I didn't realise it was launching the day it was launching. And then when I did realise, I was too late and it had sold out. So it was my own fault. But now it looks like there's going to be lips, which is exciting i wonder what else there'll be in the collection next is something that will actually get my money i did already try and buy it but oh wait i'll get into it in a sec so patrick tart this is the new major beauties headlines double take cream and powder blushes there's four new shades there's she's a doll she's vibrant she's blushing and she is baked and there's also major volume plumping lip gloss and those are going to be 24 dollars each and the blushes are going to be 34 dollars each now, let me just say, or £30, the blushes are in the UK. Let me just say that three of these colours were in a trio set for Christmas. Um, and it was super popular. So I'm guessing that's why he's brought them back and you can buy the colours individually rather than buying the um, trio set. Now, one thing about Patrick Tara is, and I don't mean this to come off shady, and maybe it's a marketing strategy. I'll get to that in a sec. You need to sort your logistics out, babe, because what's going on? There have been, I've heard, numerous issues just with people not being able to buy stuff. Nothing's ever in stock. And I don't know if it's a marketing strategy as in wanting to create and manipulate the supply and demand of products. So you can create more demand by limiting the supply because all of a sudden it's sold out, everyone wants it, it's creating this hype and this popularity. And it's not a bad technique, but babe, no one's buying your products because you haven't supplied any. I can't buy this. And I tried. It's not even like sold out, I just can't get it. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm being a hater, and he seriously does just sell out and he creates lots of units. But I think it's that he doesn't create that many units, and I think he needs to start creating more units because babe, we're trying to buy from you. Next we have a launch from Fenty Beauty. These are the new refillable lipsticks. Fenty Icon Semi Matte Refillable Lipsticks. Now let me tell you, these in person are stunning. They are so creamy. I haven't tried it on my lips. I've just swatched them on my hand. They are seriously stunning. My issue with these is that the, so it's refillable. So you buy the little mini thing and then you can buy the extra component to put it in. My issue here is, <laughs> I'm gonna um, out myself here as a cheapskate, but I just wouldn't buy. <laughs> I just wouldn't buy the big thing because it comes with a little plastic cover for the actual lipstick. So why would I pay an extra 10 pounds for the cover when I'm already paying 18 pounds for the lipstick? I don't know. Maybe I'm just, clearly I'm just cheap because I just wouldn't pay for it. I wouldn't, there's, I don't know, I just wouldn't. It takes up less space to not have it. You don't have to faff around with changing it. That's just me being cheap. I think the idea of this with less packaging and, um, you know, being refillable so there's less waste and less plastic, I actually think it's a great, great idea. Um, yeah, I'm just cheap, apparently. <laughs> Next we have a foundation, and if you know anything about me, foundation is my favourite. I don't know why. It just, I love foundations. So this is the new Revealer Skin Improving Foundation with SPF 25 from Kosas. It says it's a clean, skin-loving, medium coverage SPF 25 foundation and treatment with hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, peptides, squalane, or squalane, I don't know how you're supposed to say it, vitamin B5, arnica, and caffeine. Medium coverage, natural finish, 36 shades, $42 each. So, boom. This could get me packing things cute with the little yellow lid. This could tempt me. It seriously could. I just think it looks cute. I think I'll probably wait until reviews come out and then um, buy it. 
um, if the reviews are really, really good. Next up, we have another concealer. This is from Urban Decay. This is the Stay Naked Quickie Concealer. Okay, cheeky. What is it with uh, makeup brands and wanting to have cheeky names? Stay Naked Quickie Concealer. Hmm, naughty, naughty, naughty. But I would assume that this is just a condensed version of the shade range for the photo. Um, just because if you look at the all the other Urban Decay uh, complexion products, they've got quite a decent range. So for this to be everything would be very surprising. So I don't want to judge them too quickly when I did have a look on the US and the UK Instagrams and I couldn't see anything about this. Um, so I don't want to jump on their necks and be like, where's the shade range? Um, when this could, like I said, it could just be a condensed picture. But if this is just the shade range, what are you doing? But if the shade range is good, so I'm kind of tempted. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but this is a Colourpop launch that I would actually pay for. It feels so good to finally say that. I'm probably not going to buy it just because I don't plan on making a Colourpop order. And there's like shipping and customs, so it's just a bit long to make a Colourpop order from the UK. But if like someone else was going to order, this would tempt me. This is the Rock Candy Mega Eyeshadow Palette. 30 shades with mattes, sparkle mattes, metallics and pressed glitters. I'm not that bothered about pressed glitters, but the rest look very cute. And it looks like there's only one or two pressed glitters. From the photo, I can only see two that look like pressed glitters. But this is actually very cute, very up my alley. It's cool toned with some neutrals as well, but a little bit of colour here and there with kind of the pinkiness, kind of the grey bit the orangey one or like peach this this i think is a nice palette i definitely don't need it and i won't be picking it up but if anything from colourpop was going to tempt me it would it would be that next we have a concealer from kvd this is the good apple lightweight full coverage concealer and this is going to be 28 dollars each and it's 32 shades shade range looks good i've heard great reviews about this um, same as Ofra, KVD is kind of in my middle section rather than my support and not support. It's kind of in the middle still. Um, just, you know, when it was Kat Von D, it was in my definitely not. And then it was, you know, she was bought out um, and they changed it to like Kindness Vegan Discovery or whatever it was called. Um, and then it was in my like maybe because I was kind of hoping they were going to ditch KVD because we all know KVD stands for Kat Von D. You can make, rename it whatever you want, but we all know it means Kat Von D. Um, <laughs> I'm just being real. And then they renamed it again. So it's still KVD, but it now means something else. And it's tattoo inspired. So it was just like, I just wish they had not called it KVD still. And then it could be straight in my, yes, yeah, support. But it just feels like they're still in my, I'm not sure because... Yeah, they bought her out, but they're still using her, like, her name and her likeness and the reputation she had. You know, people like, some people liked her. And they're using that by keeping the KVD so as to not lose the customers that liked her. Which I get is a business decision, but, you know, I'm allowed as a consumer to, you know, decide. I'm not sure if I want to support them. A launch from Natasha Denona. This is the mini crush eyeshadow palette and it comes with a little brush which I think is super cute. Similar to at Christmas she did the um, Metropolis palette and it was like a Chris it was mini and it came with a brush and it was a really cute Christmas set. Um, this palette looks super cute. I like how this palette looks a lot and I think it would be a beautiful gift but I don't really wear red eyeshadow very much and as two of the five shades are quite red I just couldn't justify picking it up, but I was very, very, very tempted, let me tell you. I was very tempted. Those first three shades, if those first three shades were the same and the second two were slightly different, I would have got it. I mean, just being honest, because it came with the brush as well. So I was tempted because it came with the brush and I was like, oh, it doesn't matter if I don't use the reds, but it would just be a waste, really. Next, we have something from Urban Decay. And let me start with, it's nice that they haven't called this naked that this is a wild green palette and not naked wild green. I just want to say that. But this is the Wild Greens collection. There's a mascara also. It's $44. My issue with this is the same issue I had with the Sunset Stripped palette from Too Faced. Urban Decay are so close to greatness. Where's the wild 
in the wild greens palette i'll just leave that question there um, and while you think about that think about where there are two browns that are very 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 similar when you could have had a really beautiful deep dark forest green in there to really give this palette some depth yes you've got a dark brown a dark green sorry shimmer but it's still not that dark yeah when you look at the swatches you can see these just don't go dark enough and with just one change one of those light browns um you can see that earth side and lo-fi look almost identical there's a very subtle undertone difference but it's so subtle that you did not need both that could have been the one shade that was different and it just would have made this a little bit more not a little bit more it would have made it a lot more well-rounded as a palette um, and usable for the most amount of people i won't go back any further than that otherwise this video will be a hundred years long but that's kind of an overview of some of the latest launches things that are coming up um i'm very very excited for the hindash monochromance palette i cannot wait to pick that up i'm very excited to see what else he said he's going to launch because he keeps being like coming soon like here's a taster crepe shimmer i got you so i'm very curious to see what he is going to bring out and yeah thank you so much for watching um anything you want to let me know please do down in the comments below i'd love to hear from you and yeah if you did like this video please remember to like and subscribe it would mean so much to me and i will see you in my next video